Alrighty, more big cube tips. Let's let's do it. So the first thing is your center cases. What I mean by that is the way that you do centers. So for example, if I wanted to, to make a bar here, I would have to know how to do it, obviously. So you just attach this one up here like this. Okay, that seems extremely simple, but if you didn't know how to do it, you would do a bunch of that stuff and then you would go up. Oh. That's uh, a bit slow once you keep doing that over and over for four different bars. And on 7x7, it's even slower. This is definitely one of the things that I think people overlook. They're just like, oh yeah, I've been solving big cubes for like a year now. I'm not a beginner anymore, but they just overlook that they can't even do this without pausing. Another example would be this 5x5 case right here. It's not a specific case, but like, it doesn't matter. If you see like this five by five case and you don't know how to do it without just doing a bunch of, uh, how do I do this case, man? Uh, then yeah, you definitely need to go and fix that. By the way, this case goes like this. You may be wondering, how do I do that? Basically, you need to get this into your muscle memory. What that means is you need to drill it, which is the next tip. Drilling center algorithms is very important. If you don't do it, you can't get good at look ahead, which I'll talk about later. I don't just want you to just sit there and just do random algorithms, because that's not gonna really help. That's just gonna make you very fast at them, but you're not gonna know what they do. That's why I recommend just doing a bunch of things that will only mess up two centers. So like, that, that that's not a good example, but a bunch of that stuff, and then just like cover up the cube, and then uh, you could time it for fun if you want. But what I just want you to do is pick up the cube and then just start uh, doing your centers. You'll notice once you actually do proper solve, you will not have this problem anymore. That's because you drilled it into your muscle memory. And of course, do make sure that you are drilling your algorithms because that's how you actually learn your algorithms. Once you can do that though, and you can do your algorithms very fast and you don't pause before doing them, then you're ready to start looking ahead. You've probably heard this term like a bajillion times now, but probably one of the most important things. Basically, this makes it so that instead of pausing before you do the case, now you have a problem where you're doing it so fast that you don't know what to do after you've done that case. This is where look ahead comes in because if you already know how to do this case very well and it's in your muscle memory and you know how to make this bar like this, so uh, yeah, yeah, that was very speedy of me. And then what you do, you don't know what to do because you've been looking at this the entire time. There's no point of looking at that basically because you already know how to do it. So instead you could be looking at other pieces that you could use. For example, I could have been looking at these two and this one and this one to make my next bar. This also of course applies to seven by seven and five by five. And the bigger the cube gets, the more annoying look ahead is and literally everything else. This is also not really a tip, but just for your information, if you do seven by seven, you're automatically gonna get good at six by six, not necessarily five by five, because five by five is a little, little bit different with the centers but you are gonna get good at basically all these cubes if you do seven by seven. So I guess if you want to just be good at all the big cubes, just do seven by seven. Okay, so the next tip is regarding edge pairing. So the first step of edge pairing is always free slice, of course, the best method for pairing edges on big cubes. So the way that free slice works, you probably already know. If you don't, I don't know why you wouldn't know. But anyways, so you, you pair the edges and then you move it into the top layer. So free slice does follow the same thing as centers. You learn the same way, but one of them you do less of. This one thing, you don't learn as many cases. For free slice, you just put the edge in and then you move it in. There's not really much of the learning aspect to it, but you do have to do some heavy look ahead and some heavy turn speed to be pretty fast. But the biggest thing, instead of just learning like random cases, because there isn't really any cases to learn, like you just, there's this, and then there's literally just this. Those are the two cases. There's literally like no other cases. But there is a, a big, big thing that needs to be addressed here, which is rotating. So it's much better to just rotate the entire cube to do this, to flip this one, rather than use the other hand. So why? Why do I have to rotate instead of just doing the other hand? Isn't that faster? 
The answer is no, it's not. The reason is because like regrouping on big cubes is like like so weird because when you when you're from here, you have to hold all of these layers, and then if you want to switch hands, you have to move this out of the way, and then hold it like this, and then do this, which is definitely slower than just doing that and then flipping and then solving it. This gets even worse on seven by seven because if I'm like doing some turns here, for example, I'm doing a nice little J perm, then like regripping, I have to regrip all the way over here if I want to do a J perm from here, which I can't even do because I can't do algorithms from both sides. I'm only saying this during edges because it's just more important when you're doing the edges that you don't like regrip, do massive regrips to one hand to the other. It's, it's fine to be good with both of your hands. Just try and use one rather than the other because switching takes forever. Now we're down to the last four edges and there are three ways that we can do this. And these all basically have algorithms to do them. Again, we always with big cubes want to learn with the same way. So we start by learning the case and then we turn fast with the case, which is just drilling it a bunch of times and making sure that we don't pause before we realize that this, that's that case. And then look ahead. So look ahead is much easier on this. It's actually very easy because like you just do a bunch of flipping algorithms during this stage and it's just easy. So look ahead isn't that big of a problem, but the biggest problem is when people don't know how to do any cases. On six by six, there's not that many algorithms. It's more just do slice, flip, slice and pair of pieces don't be stupid and on 5x5 five five and 7x7 seven seven, it is different because there are algorithms such especially 5x5 five five, there are algorithms for all the cases and it makes it much faster I just specifically want to do this one on 6x6 six six because I wanted to talk more about the last four edges on 6x6 six six because they are a bit weirder if you're confused on how to pair edges for the bigger cubes such as 6x6 six six and 7x7 seven seven, you kind of want to make it into the five by five edges. See here, so there's three of them and you basically just want to solve these middle two. So these two, I'll do slice, flip, slice to solve them. And then I'll just solve it basically as a five by five case. So it's much easier. And then parity. Here's an example on seven by seven. So these two, and this one we're gonna solve first. So to do these two, we'll do slice like this and then flip and slice back. And then we have this one over here, which we can do a D2 kind of move, camera's wobbling and then flip and then slice back. So now we have these and then we can do the last uh, ones which are over here and my look at's terrible. Oh, well, turns out I'm not blind. I'm just stupid because it was on top here. I just forgot to solve it. The last tip that I have is to make sure that you're turning as fast as possible during three by three state. If you can look ahead, go ahead, but it's definitely worth just turning a bit faster than usual. You can still do look ahead, of course, because look ahead's great. Yes, very good look ahead, but turning faster is a little more important on big cubes because of the thing where you can't switch hands and that makes look ahead just a bit more difficult so yeah if you want to buy any of these cubes this one's mgc this one's mgc and um this one's mgc by jay's overpowered please like and sub and also buy